welcome to the Oxygen Addict Triathlon Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Rob Wilby, and we're brought to you every week by our sponsors, PrecisionHydration.com. Electrolytes in different strengths that match how you sweat. You can get 15% off your first order with the code OxygenAddict15. We're also brought to you by Thriver.co, the simple finger prick blood test you can do at home to track hormone, vitamin, and mineral levels in your body. 10% of all subscriptions with the code OxygenAddict10. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. I hope you're good. I hope you're doing well. I am just about thawed out after spending the weekend over at Thorsby Hall watching Outlaw X, half-distance race supported by the PTO for the pros and supported by loads of awesome supporters for the age groupers. It was a really great weekend. I've got to say it felt like... Firstly, it felt really safe. It felt really COVID secure. It felt like there's so much space there. And I I won't mind admitting, I was a little bit nervous before I went over. I've not really been out of my house much other than to take my son to school and back. I've certainly not been to any pubs and clubs and bars and restaurants and things. And so the thought of going out to an event was, it made me quite nervous in the days leading up to it. Um, But you know, the facts were it's a massive, massive area. There's tons and tons of space. I can remember it from last year and I remember the team there saying, you know, we've made transition four times bigger than it was last year. And they had done, they'd made a, a really great job of it. The transition was the size of about four football pitches. There was about 40 meters between each row of bike racking. The area was absolutely huge. Um, I've seen some drone footage and some footage from the air of the start from the swim and the way that they laid everybody out in a kind of, it's almost like the, the queue at a theme park to get on the roller coaster. The, you know, everyone's winding around in a great big area that they'd cleared an area on the grass where people could line up to start and go down into the water for the swim. So that was really good. And obviously that was the thing people were concerned about. It was the hanging around beforehand rather than, I think most people feel pretty safe swimming or biking and running out in the outdoors. So yeah, hats off to Ian and the team at Outlaw. They they did a great job of putting a really good event on. Um, everybody I spoke to there was really impressed by the way it was run. Anyone who was there supporting athletes, who was there as a you know a supporter from their bubble, the vast majority of supporters were wearing face masks around the place. The vast majority of athletes put face masks on straight after they'd done um, they'd done their races. I did my post race interviews with a mask on. It it felt really good and safe and secure, and and I found myself thinking afterwards, I wonder what it was that I was worried about really. So, you know, hats off to them for putting the race on. Um, congratulations to everybody who raced and congratulations to the team from the PTO who were there um, interviewing the athletes and they put up a big chunk of prize money to get a really good field there. So, uh, so yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about Outlaw X later on. Okay, we're going to jump into this week's news and results because it wasn't the only racing happening this weekend. So a shout out to our sponsors, Precision Hydration. I saw tons of athletes racing this weekend, Outlaw X, wearing either Precision Hydration hats or Precision Hydration visors, people in their in their pH branded dry robes. Um, so it looks like the word's getting out there about this product. If you haven't used it yet, They are the best, in my opinion, the best electrolyte supplement out there. It comes in different strengths, either 500 mils, 1,000 mils, or 1,500 milligrams of sodium per serving, and it doesn't taste salty. It's not table salt in a serving. It's not an old school electrolyte drink that makes your drink taste salty. It tastes quite neutral, and you can add it into whatever other drink you have as well, and it just replaces those electrolytes, sodium and potassium, that you lose during sweat. And that's the key to staying hydrated. It helps with preventing cramps. You need to replace the electrolytes that you lose as well as replacing the water. So... Um, They've got an offer on at the moment. If you book a free hydration call with them, with one of their experts, there's a link in the show notes. You can have a 20 minute call with them and they can give you some really good guidance as to what you personally need to replace the electrolytes when you work out. If you mention that you heard of this via the Oxygen Addict Triathlon podcast, then you'll be entered into a free draw to win a £50 Precision Hydration bundle. So get on, everybody. Links in the show notes. Remember, you can use the code OxygenAddict15 to get 15% off your first order with them. Right, so other racing that was going on this weekend. Um, Down at Ironman 70.3 Cozumel, down in Mexico, we had wins for Great Britain's Holly Lawrence. She took out the ladies' race. 
ahead of Romina Badioli of Argentina and Cecilia Perez of Mexico. She took the win by a very, very solid 10 minutes. She really shut the field down on the bike. She was over 10 clear minutes ahead of everybody else in terms of bike splits. And it looks like she cruised on the run. Um, and she still had a 10 minute margin to win by as well in 407. So great to see her racing so well. We had her on the show not too long ago and, uh, she's out there in California managing to get plenty of training done out in the canyons around there. And it's certainly carried over into her end of season fitness. So congrats to Holly. I saw on her Instagram, she's now having a holiday out there in Cozumel. So, uh, enjoy chilling out Holly. In the men's race, we had a win for Sam Long of the USA. He took the win in 3.42.44 ahead of Tyler Butterfield of Bermuda, who finished in 2.43.35. So less than a minute there. Tyler Butterfield closed with a pretty scorching 1.14 half marathon to eat into Sam's lead. Um, But Sam, you know, he had that buffer after the bike leg. He rode a 1.58 on the bike which it looks like it was six minutes clear of the next fastest bike leg. So hats off to him. That's a that's an amazing performance on that course. Um, and in third place, it was Mauricio Mendez Cruz of Mexico. Uh, Matt, Jackson, uh, Matt Hansen down in fifth, Jackson Laundry in sixth. So yeah, some good names racing there. And hopefully they've managed to uh, get themselves a little bit of prize money and maybe even hang out for a week or two of holiday time after that race as well. Other races that were going on, we had Ironman Cairns, the full distance race happening over in Australia. Wins were taken by Max Newman of Australia and Amelia Watkinson. Uh, the race was also the Asia Pacific Championships. So um, in terms of the overall results there, Amelia Watkinson takes out in 920, ahead of Sarah Crowley in 922, and Renee Killy in third place in 923. So really close racing. Um, and all the marathon times are very similar, sort of 322, 323. So a real battle of attrition on the run um, in very hot and humid conditions. Max Newman's win was in 8.13 and he closed that with a 2.50 marathon, which is brilliant under those conditions. Tim Van Berkel in second in 8.15 and Josh Amberger in third in 8.18. We also had Tim Reed in fourth, Scott Bavel in fifth. So some good racing there and great to see, you know, great to see a big branded Ironman taking place because that's one of the only, I think one of only two I know of that's taken place recently. It's great to see that that's, that's going on. Okay, um, takes us really to the, the results of Outlaw X. So as I said, I was, I was down there myself. I was watching. It was, it, was a, it was a great race to watch that play out. I got down there just in time for, um, for the start of the run. I saw the start of the female run with the, the two lead runners coming out from transition. Uh, it was Cat Matthews who had just a bit of a gap on um, Nikki Bartlett. There was maybe 10 metres apart from them, I think. They entered T2 together, and it looked like Cat Matthews got a very slightly um, faster T2, and she zoomed out. And honestly, the two of them, you'll hear me talking about this um, when we have the interviews played out in a little while, but the two of them looked like they were going out in a in an Olympic distance race. They were really, really going for it. Um, so Cat Matthews, really looked like she was in control. Nikki says in her interview that she gave everything that she had over the first lap and figured that she may as well go flat out to try and get on the shoulder and and try and race for the win. And, um, you know, Kat Matthews just kept on going. She really laid it out, but it was great to see them afterwards. There was, there was a lot of respect from the female competitors. Uh, they were all laughing and joking together and it was a really friendly atmosphere. So for the two of them, third place, Vanilla Langridge as well, they were all having a really good chat and, um, you know, it was some really good racing over on the men's side. We had a win for George Goodwin. He came out of transition, just on the heels of Tim Don. Again, Tim got the got the jump on him in transition and managed to put maybe 10 or 20 meters out on him coming out of there. And he really laid it down coming out hard. George looked like he stayed really, really composed. And, and he says in his interview, you know, I figured it was a it was a long way. And he reeled Tim in and then he put about a minute into him, I think, over the first lap and, and just kind of 
kept it under control and kept the pressure on and kept putting about a minute on every lap. Tim was running really well in second place, but young Tom Davis was running even better. He was in third place at the time. And even going into the third lap, it looked like Tim had a, a pretty comfortable cushion. He probably had a minute or so's cushion going into that lap. And Tom really went all the way to the line. Tim's looking over his shoulder and he, and he probably had, I don't know, he probably had, I'm going to say 10 or 20 meters at the finish. and looked like he had it under control. Um, but because of the staggered nature of the start, obviously Tom had started a bit further behind him and so it actually snuck at him on time. So Tom got second place, Tom Davis in second and Tim Don in third. Um, but it was really great racing. And honestly, if you've not got the chance to get down and watch the real top pros racing when they're going head to head, it beggars belief how fast both the female pros and the female uh, and the male pros look like they're running. It looks like in my head how people should run in an age group sprint race. You know, they're, they're absolutely flying along and it was just great to watch. I was really, really impressed by all of them. There was some great racing going on all the way down through the age group races as well. And I said to some of my athletes that were racing, look, this race is very probably going to be stacked because it's one of the only races that's happened in the UK this year. And so it proved there were, you know, multiple Kona age group winners and participants taking place and you know to get a win in your age group you had to finish in the top 10 overall in several of the age groups there were some real quality battles going on so uh, I was really impressed by that racing that was going on there. Now I managed to get some interviews with uh, with a lot of the pros after the racing had happened. Um, as you'll hear, it wasn't a warm day, and it was very windy as well as not being warm. There was a howling northerly blowing, so the sound quality on this. Bear in mind, the wind's blowing its socks off. We're all outdoors. A lot of the pros are very cold, and several of them did their interviews wrapped in my coat. God bless them, because they, the pros, and they want to do an interview before they leave and go and grab the bag from transition. So thanks very much to everybody. Young Dan Dixon in particular, who was, you know, you can hear his teeth chattering during the interview. Bless him. Um, and, you know, the sound quality isn't quite what I would hope for in the usual run of things. There's a lot of background noise and uh, it's just all part of getting interviews at the finish line. So I hope you enjoy this. It's a it's a taste and a flavour of getting to interview people right after the races have happened. So we've managed to get interviews here with all of the podium and some others as well. We've got George Goodwin, Kat Matthews, Tom Davis, Nicky Bartlett, Tim Don, Fenella Langridge, uh, young Dan Dixon, who a lot of you will remember, actually, he won the Super League race out in Malta. He's a, a real rock star in the the sort of the junior racing scene, and I think he ended up finishing certainly in the top ten overall. As a, he's just turned eighteen and finished sixth form, so cracking debut for him over the middle distance. Uh, Ruth Astle and also Ian Dempsey as well, who finished right up there. I think he was second in his age group in the end, or maybe won his age group, um, but he had a, a real great battle in the race and. Um, and he had a you know, shoulder-to-shoulder run with Chris Standage, so that was great to watch them racing really well. Um, so, yeah, here we go. I've run these interviews back-to-back, so I'll hopefully identify who we're interviewing as we go along. I hope you enjoy this. Here we go to this week's Interview of the Weeks with the Outlaw X Podium and other racers. Kat, congratulations. How are you feeling? Thank you. Yeah, really chuffed with that. Um, it was a really great race, uh, a proper female professional race. Everyone was challenging each other challenging each other all the way through um yeah it's really really good and the outlaw has done such a good job to put on an event like this in such situations but you and nikki i thought you were going to have your own little iron war going on there i just talked to her and she said well i thought that too and she just ran away from me you guys left transition you looked like you were in an olympic distance race you were absolutely was that your plan just go hard from the gun and see if you can break away um, I had the confidence to know that if I came into transition with Nikki, um, that I would probably be on for the top spot. Um, I'm pretty. I've been putting some really decent, consistent running down recently, and I think it's just it's just coming through. And I knew that. Um, yeah, I, I actually didn't go off too hard. I ran a 19 minutes first 5k, so I think my laps were really quite consistent. Um, I haven't checked the final time yet. Um, yeah, I I think so. Um, when it goes well, it's easy, right? Yeah, and to be honest, it's definitely it's like the mental side of it. When you are in the lead, it is easier to sort of say, "Okay, I'm in control," um, just settle down, like just enjoy the run. Um, I've been having some um, GI issues recently in racing, and this time I've done I've done 
everything I possibly can. So I don't know what it is now that has worked, but it did work. Um, and I, it meant that I could just actually just embrace the run and like really run on feel and just let myself go. It was really, really fun. And you must also have a lot of confidence in your cycling after the, the National 100. That made a real difference to my um, middle distance racing, definitely. Um, obviously, the competition, um, I, I know Nikki Bartlett is a very good cyclist, so I was still a bit, um, uh, I guess, apprehensive to see how that would play out today and Fenella uh, language. So I think the 100 definitely gave me confidence, and especially going to Tallinn um, a couple of weeks back. But um, yeah, today the course was so up and down, but I think the skill level that I had at the 100 mile as well, being able to ride the course and just look for the right bits of tarmac and work on the hills that was quite good confidence for this course because it was really quite a challenge with the wind as well yeah yeah and are you off to daytona are you going to head out there for the race at the end of the year hopefully um i would love to go um watch this space i guess <laughs> i am sitting outside the top 40 at the moment i'm hoping that i'll um get bumped up um and i would absolutely love to be there the pto have done such a good job at supporting all of us this season so it would be an honor to race there and to be part of the pto um organization with challenger all right, fantastic. Thanks very much for your time and well done. Thanks, Rob. Cheers. OK, George Goodwin, first cross the line today. How did you feel, buddy? Yeah, good. Um, nice to be back racing the proper 70.3. Um, yeah, proper British course on a British day. Yes, it wasn't quite the, the end of summer day we all hoped for, was it? Chilly this morning. Was the water OK? Water was cold. It was a, more, it was a shock because we couldn't get in to warm up. Um, but yeah, you know, like glad it was a bit shorter yeah. so how is it for you pros when like it's the same thing cold water shock affects everyone you jump in and you've got to get going is it just a real focus on the breathing and try and stay calm yeah definitely like i was quite lucky that i think hell a few weeks ago was colder oh, yeah. in all's water so um like yeah i was sort of expecting it to be really cold and it wasn't that like as bad um and then yeah just like work hard so like you're keeping warm and then had a few boys come past me on the about halfway in the swim Okay. managed to get on their feet and then uh, yeah just a quick transition yeah, okay. yeah so out to the bike you were riding with was it Tim and Tom you were you were riding yeah, with yeah so we were we were that was like the front of the race um, so yeah it was me Tim Tom uh, Bowden maybe a couple of others because it was quite congested coming out of the swim um, and then yeah like Tim was putting the hammer down for the first 10k or so uh, so I had to go past Tom and just sort of um, yeah just like sort of me and Tim started working together um, you know he did like 20 minutes on the front and then I'd do another 20 minutes um, and then yeah like just I kept kept on hearing time gaps like only 45 or 50 seconds so I was a bit like wary of I wasn't sure who it was so I was a bit wary of like not sitting up and like keep on pushing on because like I know I'm running well but it's always nice to have a buffer um, so yeah like I was sort of just kept on pushing on and uh, I think by the time we got into transition I don't know how, did we have like two and a half three minutes yeah it looked something like that yeah you looked to have a good couple of minutes when I saw you but I didn't yeah. see you till you were going into your last lap of the run and by that point you'd you'd broken away from Tim I think yeah so like he set off like out of transition like rapid I was thinking oh the old boy's still got some speed in the legs um, so yeah I just like didn't panic and just like caught up to him gradually um, and then when I got up to him I just took some time to like sort myself out like so I was still running with like everything just in my hands like my watch my gels okay. everything so like when I got up to him I just like like put watch on gels in the pocket sunglasses on um, you seem very composed that seems like a very seems like a very mature thing to do in terms of obviously Tim's tried the old trick of putting the pressure on yeah. right out the gate it sounds like you've got a very level head on your shoulders when it comes to the race in mind would that be accurate yeah I think so like I, I guess like having raced ITU stuff this stuff seems quite slow, like, like in comparison. So, like in IT stuff, you're you haven't got time to think at all. So, you, so you have to make the decisions like even quicker. So here, you just feel more composed because you're running slower, a bit steadier, um, and you just have to think as well. Like, he's got ten seconds, but the run's going to be like 72, 73 minutes. So, like, in the long run, it's not that big a gap. So, if you just 
We had a little chat when I got up to him. <laughs> he was just, you know, taking the pit, taking the piss out of my moustache. Because <laughs> he's got a much better one than me. He's the man when it comes to moustaches, mate. That's that's the one to aspire to, isn't it? He has, he's got about 30 years on me as well, so... <laughs> Well, that's great. In a way, we've got, like, like Tim is a legend of the sport, three-time Olympian. He's still got the passion and the fire for doing it. He's still in super great shape. And then we've got, you know, you and Tom, the, the new generation coming right through from ITU. Yeah. It's really great to see you all, all racing here at the same time at the same place. Yeah. What are your plans for the future in terms of distances? Where do you see yourself going? I'm staying at 70.3 for a while. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, like... I don't want to go up to long and lose any speed or like before I feel like I've like really nailed 70.3 um, like I think I've got a really good world champs result in me um, so yeah like you've already got a really good world champs in you you went under the wader a little bit in Nice didn't you and I think that surprised a lot of people yeah that's still like that's still probably my biggest sort of like I was in such a good position and then like 12th was like in the end was not bad um, but like from where I was like halfway on the run so like yeah 12th is good but like I, I, I can see myself you know It's a small margin isn't it between 12th and the podium at that level and especially at Nice this year the, the, the depth was so deep yeah, yeah. that's a terrible phrasing on part of a supposed journalist <laughs> <laughs> Yeah but like um, you know that obviously we haven't had a chance to do one this year so hopefully, like, I'll have progressed... Well, I think I have progressed quite a lot this year. Um, and then we've got, like, almost 12 months until World Champs. So it'll be, like, it'll be 24 months between World Champs. So, um, well, I think you put a lot of people... Well, you put yourself on the map in the minds of a lot of people with your performance at Helvellyn and, you know, being right up to Alistair Brownlee on his shoulder on a course that's... Frankly, it's not a running course, is it? It's more for mountaineers, that one. Um, so his next few... Are you off to Daytona? Is that, the, is that the big next step for the end of the year, hopefully? Yeah, so... Um, I was ranked 40th, so like top 40 get an invite. Oh, you're in? Yeah, so I'm in. Um, I think there'll be a few wild cards as well, obviously. Um, but yeah, I was in on merit. So we just have to see if we can get into America at the moment. Um, but yeah, like, that'll be good. I think that'll be an exciting race because you've got... It's a funny distance. Is it like a, I think it's 100k in total. So it's like a 1500 swim, maybe like 85k on the bike, and then like a 13 or 14k run. So I think the guys, like... Guys like me are just focusing on 70.3s and some of the guys like, well, I hope like people like Gustav and uh, Blummy get wild cards. Yeah. They should, but because um, then you've got the real ITU guys against, like a lot of the guys in the top 10 are racing Ironman, yeah. like are not really uh, as sharp as us. So like it'd be interesting to put them up against us in that distance. And we were saying yesterday, weren't we? It's a, it's a shame in a way that the, you know, the Daytona race is focused on a shorter than 70.3. And a lot of the higher ranked athletes at the moment are from, you know, they've got the points in Ironman distance racing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, yeah, it could be interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the, the, the focus of the sport, like the, the big, biggest names are from full distance Ironman racing. Um, some of the top guys can still pull it out at 70.3, like Fredino, um, Keenly, um, Gomez, Al. Uh, but some of them, you know, some of them just look sort of a bit, a bit ploddy to me over the 70.3 distance. I love it. I love the smack talk. It's great. <laughs> not, not proper smack talk, just uh, p- polite British smack talk. That's it. That's as, that's as rude as we get over here, isn't it? Love it. Great stuff. So what message have you got then for, the, uh, for these hot shots racing in Daytona? The Brits are coming? Yeah, well, hopefully I'll still go in sort of a bit underrated, a bit under the radar, and then... Uh, you know, just um, sneak in for a, for a good result. Brilliant. All right, thanks very much for your time, George. Thank you very much. Cheers. All right, we've got team Nikki Bartlett here. We've got the whole family. We've got the dog. Nikki, congratulations today. Great race for you. Thanks very much, Rob. Yeah, it was absolutely brutal out there. But yeah, uh, yeah, brilliant. Proper British race. But reason. Yeah, really cold. It's like a white at the moment. Um, so yeah, this is like what take two of our interview because that's going to get changed because it's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw you come out on the run with Kat. You two were absolutely flying. I just arrived at that point and saw the pair okay. of you running out, and it yeah. looked like you were heading out on a 10k. <laughs> I felt like that, and I was like, "Is she joking?" <laughs> I, was like, I was like, "Right, well, the re- that's the race. I'm not taking my watch. I have to go with it. Like, I'm not gonna be like, oh no, I'll stick to this pace. I know Kat can run a ridiculous speed. Like." I'm pretty sure she could probably run a sub-16 5k or around the low 16. A 10k is like a 34 minute. So I thought, 
this is just her pace. I know she won't blow. So I was like, unless I give it a go, then I won't know if I could win. I gave it a go, and I was like, I can't. I literally cannot go at that pace for, for much longer. <laughs> Well, you hung on for a full lap, didn't you, for sure? And, like, fair play to you, because in a half-iron distance race, that's a long way to go flat out for, knowing you've still got two 7K laps to go. I know, like, I know I'm probably in around a 121, 120 off the bike, on a, like, not a course like this. This is just, um, like, this, I did, to be honest, I didn't know the course was like this. Um, but that doesn't matter anyway. But, so I thought, I'm, I'm a strong enough runner to try and go with it. It's not like I was, like, it's not like I'm a say a, a 1.30 half marathon runner or something and trying to go 120 suddenly um, but I was like I might as well go for it but better athlete one on the day there's nothing I could have done about it oh bless <laughs> you that's very cool of you to and say I that I on the last 40k of the bike um, uh, because I was like I need to tie her out <laughs> There's a lot of people sort of saying, like, it's just good to be out and racing again, to get something on the board in 2020. That's it. It's just, like, I mean, if we just skipped autumn, because this feels like winter, and I think it's going to be, like, the nights are drawing in, it's getting really cold, um, and this just gives us a load of hope for, for the winter season. Just gives you that big buzz. Like, I'm hoping to do another two triathlons, but likelihood they might not go ahead so this could be my last race of this. actually no I'm doing a 5k soon but my last triathlon race of the season um, hopefully not but it could be um, and just like sharing the course game with age group athletes and the amount of age groupers today who just cheered me on whilst they're doing their own race I'm like you are amazing like, and that's what it's all about like I've come from the novice triathlete oh, wasn't a triathlete came up through the age group ranks to a professional and so it's, that's something I'm really passionate about is sharing that journey with, with age group athletes. I love the interaction. I love the triathlon community. And it just feels like everyone's just come together. Well, not literally because we can't. Um, but <laughs> like, this feels like there's hope now that triathlon can go ahead. Like, and Outlaw X has done an amazing job. And hopefully they've led by now, by example, of how it can be done. They've put on a fantastic COVID policy race and um and you can see everyone's buzzing to be doing it even if it's free, like literally i feel like it's about one degree at the moment <laughs> um so yeah so even if it's freezing we're all just buzzing to just be out here again and and yeah and um, luckily we were still able to get a swim in um with the temperatures dropping of the air temperature and it's not so much just the air temperature it's that cold wind chill like today like even on the run i was like i'm getting cold on the run <laughs> It is more the wind than anything, I think. I, I got up at home this morning and it was sunny and it was actually quite pleasant. And I got here and was like, mm, oh, OK, right, <laughs> extra that? jacket. I know. Um, I can't, I, yeah, I was speaking to Susie Cheatham yesterday and she was like, I don't know what you're on about, it's 15 degrees and sunny down here. And I was like, yeah, it's not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just it's so nice. Like, you know, parents have watched me race for ages. Um, they were able to watch me race. Um, got Titch, our dog here. She might not be able oh, to. Yeah, come she's to cute. Anymore. Yeah. Oh, she's such a little dog slut. <laughs> she's so famous. Like s- s- yesterday, everyone just wanted to see Titch. Like, oh, it's Titch. And I was like, I don't know who these people are, but they they know who Titch is because I just share her on social all the time. But yeah, it's just amazing just to race alongside British pro athletes. Like we've got such a s- ridiculously strong Brit- yeah. male and female. Yeah. Like so many strong people and hopefully we can just you know inspire the next generation to come through um and yeah just having that friendly like we were on the start line having some friendly banter and you know it's just a really nice atmosphere to be around um and we all push each other on and get the best up to each other on race day it's not anything like you know it's not like we come across the line and you just want to congratulate each other afterwards and yeah, it does seem like you've got a really genuinely like you you, the four of you are all just here like having a chat and hugging each other and that's you wouldn't imagine no, that happening we had to fist pump oh we there you would, go okay we would originally hug each other but no the fifth the boring fist pump had to come out today um yeah it's like i could because i was freezing so it was for i was like i just want to give you a hug and warm you up but you can't even do that can you um but no it is nice and and yeah hopefully more and more british females athletes out there can can look up and be like yeah no i wouldn't give that a crack I think so, definitely. Well, congratulations on your race today and thanks for your time. That's all right. Cheers. Tom Davis, second place here at Owl Lorette. Congratulations, mate. How would you feel? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a really hard race and, you know, finishing, finishing two or three seconds behind Tim, but then obviously taking the win because I started behind him, you know, that pushed me all the way. It was uh, really, really quite windy out there, so it was... It was a tough day in the office, but no, it was, it was a great feeling and a great race. So for people who are not here, it's chuffing freezing right now, isn't it? <laughs> How is it getting in at seven this morning and lining up on all of that? 
Um, I, t- I tried not to think about the water too much, to be honest. It was a case of go, and then that was it. Um, once you're in, the, the water was cold, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, it, I don't know if it resembled swimming. It was more swing the arms around and get to the end. But, um, no, I mean, onto the bike, and it wasn't that cold, to be honest. It was just windy. Um, as soon as you're out that water, it was fine. It's just, you know, once you finished, it was uh, it's pretty cold. But How is it in terms of being out there on the bike and it's uh, we're going to give you a second day just to get a jacket on because as we're standing here the wind is howling across and it's freezing isn't it mate yeah how was it out riding on the roads in the wind today how was that for you yeah i mean there was, a, it was when it was coming through the hedges it was um a bit sketchy at points you know i'm running a disc and a deep front wheel but no it was um it wasn't too bad to be honest and you know as long as you paced it well um yeah it just makes it an, an exciting ride to be honest when it's windy and sort of really makes the strong bikers show their show their riding Something really impressed me, mate. You absolutely dug in there with you could you had your Tim was about, I don't know, a minute up the road as you came through at the start of the last lap and you just looked like you were absolutely flying. Did you know how close you were to him? I was getting time checks from the start of the run and then I, th- I think the first lap and a half, maybe two laps, it was sort of hanging at around the two minute mark. Um and then sort of yeah, onto the third lap I could sort of I saw I saw him about halfway around the lap and from then on it was just right, that's my target, it's time to go and uh, I was feeling strong. Like, I've been really pleased with my running this year. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I caught him on the line pretty much. So, yeah, great race. And final thing then, you've obviously had a nice little payday here from the PTO for this. It caps off the year quite nicely for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, coming off of a second place in um, Poland a few weeks ago, another second place here, it's been made the most for what has been a, a, a tough year. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it, it's always nice to get on the podium and, and this year more than anything. Yeah, we're grateful just to race. Awesome. Well, we'll get back on the podcast for a full interview soon, mate. Go and get warm. Thanks very much. Cheers. Tim Don, congratulations. Second over the line in third place today. Yeah, I'm over the moon. Um, yeah, it's always nice to get on the podium. That's what we, we want to be in the fight. Um, these young bucks are getting quicker and I'm getting older. So, yeah, every race I'm, I'm more, more than happy. You talk yourself down. It looked to me like you were catching George on the last lap then. And when I shouted the time gap, there was a definite glint of, I'm having him. There was a, there was a <laughs> bounce in your step. You know what? It's never over till it's over. And, yeah. you know, as much as it's a beautiful sport, it can be so brutal. So, you know, as you, I pushed all the way to the line. I think I, I beat Tom by, by about three to five seconds, but maybe he beat me overall. I'm not, yeah. not exactly sure. So, yeah, I mean... You know, George, he's on a flyer. He had a great race at Helvellyn. I've been seeing he's been doing sub-20, beating uh, Botti here once. So I knew he was in great shape. So it was awesome to get away with him and really put the hammer down on the bike. You know, we always like an honest race. And yeah, yeah. Oh, and like, I haven't raced in England since properly, since I think really Wimbledon. And that was many, many years ago. And I'm blown away by those marshals on the bike. There was not one one moment through the tiny villages where I thought oh dear what's going on it was like yeah well impressed and it's also great the PTO were over here putting putting money behind a British race like this and you get the chance to sort of you know earn some prize money at a home race as well I won't say no to prize money so yeah no I mean you know the the PTO kind of I'm not sure exactly what their goal is uh, um, but you know I think they're slowly finding their way it's been harder than they thought and obviously with the um the virus they haven't had to had had the impact that they wanted on the professional sport but by supporting the small races that does mean a lot it's all very well supporting the the top 10 in the world but there's um there's athletes here who didn't get prize money who who who, who were fighting for it and i think that they'll definitely be grateful so you know hopefully the pto can carry on supporting you know the, the the 50 to 150 ranked athletes in the world because those are the those are the real triathletes Good man. Listen, thanks very much for your time, Tim. Well done today. Cheers, thanks. No worries. Thanks. <laughs> Fanella, congratulations on your race. How did you do today? Uh, I finished third and I'm really happy. Oh, congratulations. That's brilliant. It was really hard to work out where everyone was by the time everyone else was on the group. That's a brilliant result for you. Yeah, no, I'm really happy. It's a good, a good day out, a good day racing. I'm just happy to be here and happy to cross the finish line. And it's one of those days where the weather's not quite been the, the, the warm, sunny end of summer that we hoped for, hasn't it? Oh, no, not really. It's, it's definitely British weather. Uh, the water was Baltic. Um, normally I'm okay with it, but it was just my face was cold and I couldn't quite catch my breath. Um, it's the same for everyone, but then, but yeah, I, I wasn't cold on the bike, which I'm really happy at. But the wind was strong and it came at you from every direction. Yeah, so like headwind every direction, Dave, was it? Definitely. 
I don't think there was a tailwind. Someone might say otherwise, but I definitely didn't feel it. <laughs> You've got to take a lot of confidence from that result today against this competition, haven't you? Uh, the British girls are so strong, and to be racing against them, it's, uh, it's, it's great. And um, I think I've got some work to do, but it, it's, it's really great to come third against these guys. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time, and well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Right, so Dan Dixon, do you know where you finished today, Dan? Where were you? Uh, I think I was around about sixth. Uh, I was tracking fifth pretty much the entire uh, ride until about an hour and a half in, and then Luke Pollard passed me. Um, and then from there, I pretty much just was totally solo in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> no man's land on the bike. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I came off, had a, a pretty solid first lap. Second lap was progressively getting worse and the last lap was yeah it was pretty hard but uh, no I mean I finished sixth in the in the pros there I mean that's obviously unofficial with the staggered starts but no it was it was a lot different tied to you that's for sure <laughs> you've got your money's worth there that's what we say in middle distance racing when you when you end up going slower and slower on the last lap so last time we saw you you just won the junior race out in Malta at Super League is this where you headed, do you think, middle distance racing? Or was this just, uh, do you know what, it's a chance of racing? Uh, yeah, it was a chance of racing. Um, I left school, like, what, two months ago now or something, um, finished my A-level. So I've gone into kind of training full-time. I haven't gone to uni. Um, I mean, it is something that I want to do in the future. My dad was an Ironman athlete, did the 1998 World Champs in Kona and stuff. Um, so it was my first kind of knowledge about triathlon um, but no I mean for now I'm firmly stuck on ITU Super League for at least the best part of the next 10 years I would imagine but no I mean you know had it not been 2020 then I wouldn't have done this but you know it's something totally different and yeah I mean plenty of time to recover afterwards and yeah I mean it's just an opportunity and yeah to come six pro is pretty yeah I'm pretty pleased with that to be honest and a nice little bit of pocket money as well to take away from the PTO you've got to love that <laughs> yeah, well, it depends on where I am because I think the prize the prize win goes down to top five. So it was a bit like, oh no, oh no, really? Yeah. Um, so I was just off it, but I mean, I didn't race for the prize money to start with. I mean, racing these top top guys that I've you know looked up to for a long time is, you know, and the experience itself is pretty pretty ex- what do you call it exciting. So no, I mean, it's a totally different atmosphere and different type of racing, but. Yeah, I certainly have a hell of a lot of respect for these guys now. I mean, yeah, it's easy enough to say, like, oh, yeah, I could have done this and that, but now I've done one, like, I know if I know how good these guys are at the front end, you know, so, yeah, it's uh, something to aspire to of the, you know, the coming years as I want to move into it in the future. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, cool. I'll see you soon. Ruth Assel, congratulations. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Well, I'm a lot warmer than you right now. I should offer you a jacket, I think. <laughs> How was your race today then? Uh, pretty average. Um, I had terrible swim as always. I have to say, like having to jump straight into 13 degrees water without any acclimatisation is horrendous. Yeah, did you manage to just get your breath at all? Because it's horrendous for the first few minutes, yeah, isn't it, was, it? It was tough, but you know, everyone's in the same boat, so I guess that's kind of that. Um, yeah, swim de- definitely needs a lot of work, but I know that. Uh, I then had probably the worst T1 exit I've had. I thought it was quite bad at Helvellyn the other week, but... Um, my elastics had come off my shoes, so I had to like, stop, put my shoes on, then clip in. And also, my bike had fallen off the rack in transition, so I lost all of my hydration in the back. So I had about no, 300 mils of water for the whole bike course. Not ideal. Um, but yeah, I felt like the bike course I found a bit of a struggle. Uh, it's just like, really windy, really blowy, a bit draggy. Um, I felt a bit better when some of the age group men started coming past, just because there was like, people to to look at and concentrate on um, but yeah generally a bit tough and then just lay it all out on the run and actually I had a really good run I got a run yeah you look like you were running really well yeah thanks I just I just felt quite good uh, and by that point I was like I've just got to give it everything and just keep trying to well done um, yeah it's like I've just got to keep pushing and just see what happens and um, yeah so pretty happy with that Awesome, and it's great to get a race in this year, isn't it, after all of the, the horrendous nothingness of 2020? Yeah, really, really nice. I'm quite lucky that it's my second race of the season. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, kudos to the OSB events guys for actually managing to put a good, good event on. And it's felt very 
you know, they've been quite strict with the masks, everyone's like spaced out, um, but you can tell everyone's just like really happy to be racing and, and actually get racing. Cool. All right, thanks very much. Super, thank you. Ian Dempsey, congratulations on your race, mate. How did you find that today? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it was brutal. Like, it's a tough, tough course, it's really windy today. Um, but yeah, I mean, short and swim probably didn't help me really much, too much, but um, but yeah, I, you know, I enjoyed it. You know, I fell apart a bit on the last lap of the run, but it's quite a hard run course, so. But, yeah. Come on, you got to tell the listeners a story about your bike. Come on, you've just told me what was going on, on uh, with the gears on the bike. Yeah, so uh, my coach will love this, but um, yeah, so first section of the course hit a real bad pothole and it just got stuck in bottom gear. So I was, I was just about to bail, to be honest. It just wouldn't go back up got to the climb tried to like force it up the climb i got the video guy recording me as i'm going up i just jumped off and just kicked it and it released and went back up so obviously uh yeah but, but a load of guys had gone past me i worked really hard to get back to chris standage and sam proctor and uh yeah we all came in together ran the first two laps really hard and fell apart on the last lap <laughs> so but that's about my race i'd say so pro tips for uh, bike maintenance is if it ain't working give it a good hard kick is that mate, essentially that's about it yeah, yeah, yeah is that right mate yeah <laughs> just kick it as hard as you can bang <laughs> but yeah it worked <laughs> all right brilliant stuff thanks ian no, cheers rob thank you mate all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It was it was really nice to be there and get those interviews, and I hope it's, it's given you a flavor of the pro race, and hopefully you can hear a bit of the background that was going on as well. And something that I didn't manage to capture as well was the atmosphere amongst the age group racers. I was desperate to be out there racing with everybody. We had over 40 members of my team racing, and the, the spirit amongst them, people were cheering each other on. We had... Um, we had one of our athletes trip and fall and was helped up by another athlete. So to read about that going on afterwards was great. Everyone who finished came over and got wrapped up and put the bobble hats on and cheered everybody else on. So it was just amazing. We've managed to build this team to be more than I even dreamed it could have been. The team spirit amongst people who, a lot of whom hadn't met in real life before the race, was just brilliant. So I want to give a shout out to a few of the members. You'll have heard some of them in their age group interviews. I'm really happy to be able to tell you that Simon Maguire, who you heard a few weeks ago, having lost six or seven stone, managed in his goal of completing his first half Ironman race. So well done, Simon. It was brilliant to see you do that. Um, Laura Hillier managed to smash her race as well. She came round and God bless you. She was really emotional, had the tears going on at more than one point. So to come back from having been hospitalized twice with COVID this year to finish at All RX was a brilliant performance. Well done, Laura. Natalie Duncan smashed her first official half iron distance race, finishing second in her age group. And I think 12th age group are overall on the ladies' side. So well done, that. Other notable performances, we had Nigel Buxton finish sixth in his, age, in his age group. Pat Hackett was fourth in her age group. And Sue Davis was sixth in her age group. So well done on the performances. But it's not just about performances. It's about getting out there and doing it. And I've got to say, if I'd been faced with those temperatures on race day morning... I would possibly have bottled out of racing. So well done to all of you who decided they were going to get in there and got stuck in. And you know what? I know several people didn't manage to finish. And if you didn't, there is no shame in that. You got out there and you gave it a go to get into that cold water and ride out in the, you know, the cold winds. I've got nothing but respect from anybody who went out there and raced in that. And also, I've got to say, I've got nothing but respect for the people who decided not to start and not to race. We've got more than a few doctors and medical professionals who decided that they didn't want to race because they, you know, they didn't want the possibility of having to self-isolate and be missing from their wards should anything happen. And I totally respect that. I think, you know, we all know how desperate people were to race. To decide you're not going to do that for the sake of other people i'm thinking of sarah in particular here who decided not to race because she didn't want the possibility of you know having to self-isolate that's an incredibly selfless thing to do when you've been training for all this time so you know hats off to everybody um it was great to be there it was great to give it a go and it's also great to recognize the people who are thinking of other people in front of themselves so cap is doffed to all of you and that kind of brings us around to Coach's Couch this week. I really wanted to talk to the people who have done the event, who've raced out Lorex or raced this weekend 
or even if you want to put this common information in your cap and store it away for the future, I thought something really good to talk about would be the way that we approach or the best way to approach, in my experience and opinion, recovering from an event like this so that your body kind of gets back into shape, ready to train. So the first thing to talk about here is you need to have a plan for this. You're not just going to get back and get ready to train. Then you need to plan that almost all of that week after an event like 70.3, almost all of it is going to be written off for any kind of real training. You need to expect to feel pretty rough on the Monday. You can expect, you know, a great deal of soreness in your legs on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, although that doesn't always happen. For most people, it does. But you can also expect to feel extremely overtired, perhaps to expect to feel have a flat mood, perhaps to expect to feel, you know, that it's natural. I think you've built up for so long to do an event that once you've done it, even if you've done really well, I think it's natural to experience that kind of post-event blues and expecting that to happen and knowing that other people feel it can make it feel a little bit more bearable, can make it feel a little bit more normal, if you like. So mood-wise, you can be a little bit down and flat. You can just feel a bit rough in general. You can expect to want to feel to, that you want to eat foods that you wouldn't usually eat. So often your body craves salty, fatty food, sugary food, chocolate, things like that. So take your foot off the gas of restriction for a few days or a week and allow yourself some treats. You've worked really hard and you've probably restricted yourself a little bit in terms of treats over the past few weeks or even months. So that's okay. But expecting to feel these things is part of the challenge of, of overcoming them, I think. So I'm going to sketch out to you how we approach recovery week within the team. So we usually schedule a day after the race, in this case Monday, as a complete rest day. We either do absolutely nothing or we do a recovery swim. And by recovery swim, I just mean you get in and you swim up and down just until you start to feel a little bit more human and you get out again. It's not about swimming hard. It's about swimming incredibly easy and taking lots of big breaks. Obviously, at the moment, in the time of COVID, that's very challenging to schedule a swim even. So if you can't do that, either a total rest day or a really easy recovery spin on the bike. And I use the phrase spin for a reason. Put yourself in the little ring on the front of the bike, put yourself in an easy gear at the back of the bike and just spin your legs out. So cadence is maybe a little bit higher than usual, 90 to 100. You're not trying to put out any kind of power. We're looking to limit ourselves to under 55 or even 50% of FTP. Keep yourself in heart rate zone one. Just turn those legs over. And the reason that we're doing these sessions is to encourage blood flow around the body and hopefully to try and clear away some of those waste products that might be there. And encouraging blood flow is hopefully going to encourage our body to heal and recover slightly faster. It won't do that if you're tempted into going hard, doing a couple of intervals to see how you feel. So, you know, it might sound ridiculous to suggest this, but all of our brains have done it. I'm just going to test myself for a few minutes and see how I go here. Really keep a lid on this. The purpose of doing it is like getting a free massage. You're trying to flush blood through your muscles that are tired and damaged just to help promote repair and recovery. So almost nothing or a recovery spin on Monday, 30 minute recovery spin on the bike on Tuesday, Wednesday, a 30 minute recovery swim. So you may be doing a little bit more now and you may be doing some focus drills. But again, you're only doing it with a purpose of trying to get your body moving again. We go with a, a 30 to maybe 45 minute recovery spin on a Thursday. By this time, you can you can still be feeling really sore in the thighs. It's not unusual for Wednesday to be the worst day after a Sunday race in terms of in terms of the soreness in your thighs. And there's a reason it's called DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. It gets worse on Tuesday and Wednesday. I can remember walking around on a Thursday after a half Ironman and my legs still kind of almost buckling in the wrong direction as I've been standing up. So I know that that's one of my particular things. I, I get sore for a long time after a race. And if you're the same, then absolutely stay off running till then. And I don't schedule any runs for our athletes until Friday where they go out for the first sort of 20 minute jog, walk breaks in there, really low end of e-pace. So a really slow jog just to sort of start to feel out how the legs are feeling again. Again, don't do that if you've got any kind of soreness, but it's been my experience with most of our athletes and with myself. Friday's about the first day you can expect to do any kind of jog. Saturday, 
we can start to introduce a bit more of a normal ride. But again, limit yourself if you're riding outdoors, maybe limit yourself to 90 minutes. If you're indoors, limit yourself to an hour. And you're, you're mostly in zone one again here with maybe some sections of riding in very low zone two. So maybe getting up towards 65% of FTP. But again, really casual conversational ride, talking with one of your friends about the event. Um, that's the way to go. And then on Sunday, you might be getting to the point where you can do a, what you would consider to be a traditional run again. So I schedule 30 minutes at low end of e-pace. Just get yourselves out there and have have a nice run and start to enjoy the feeling that you can actually run without your legs buckling again. Um, and really, I think if you if you sketch that out and you expect to feel not normal for seven days after a race, by the time the following Monday comes around, you can ease yourself back into a normal training week. And it really forms a nice kind of full stop to the event. It recognizes that you've done something extremely hard. You prepared for it really well. And at the end of that, at the end of preparing for it, you get a little break and a little bit of a refresh. Now, I'm going to talk next week about an end of season break because at this time of year, you know, sort of end of September, beginning of October, as I'm recording, it's a good time to consider that end of season break to really put the full stop on the season and let your mind and your body rejuvenate and refresh. But we'll go into that in more detail next week. So, Listen, the last thing to say here is if you've been listening to this, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while and you've been thinking about getting some coaching, um, now is the perfect time to explore that in a conversation with us. I've had a whole bunch of calls this week from podcast listeners who've said, you know, I've listened to the show for a year or two years and I'm really getting into triathlon and I've really been considering getting getting some coaching and I've never really been sure whether it's for me or not. And I wasn't sure whether or not it was just for, you know, the very pointy end of the field. Hopefully, the age group stories that we've put up on part of the podcast have, have helped you see it's very much not about the pointy end of the field. We specialize in coaching for age groupers, people who are super keen about the sport. And whether or not you're super keen because you want to qualify for the world championships or you're super keen because you just love the sport and you want to get involved with a great community, we've got coaching really for all abilities, all levels. The only thing we haven't got is if you've not got a high level of enthusiasm. So that's the only requirement for, for, for entry. So if you'd like to find out more about being coached by Team Oxygenetic, just click the link in the show notes and you can book a call with me or one of our teams to chat about coaching with us. Um, if you can get yourself in before the 30th of September... Our prices are going up on the 30th of September. They're going up from 997 for a year's coaching to 1197 for a year's coaching. So if you can get yourself in before the 30th of September, that's a £200 saving for you. And you'll keep that price for as long as you're a continuous member of the team. And like I said, if you want to have a chat through whether you'd be a good fit for coaching with me and the rest of the team, set up a phone call or a Skype call with us. And Tuesdays at 7.15 p.m. UK time, come along and train with us on the Oxygen Addict Triathlon podcast power hour ride on swift workouts guaranteed to raise your ftp and give you a faster more powerful bike like this coming season most of our team are doing a recovery ride this week in lieu of power hour but they'll all be on discord having a chat as well so i'm giving them permission to sandbag the ride so they can have a chat and complain about the sore legs so come along and have a ride you can just find us in the the swift events list and that just about brings us to the end of the show. Thanks very much for listening, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a bit of a different one with lots of different interviews with athletes from Outlaw X, but it's been a great event to wrap up this season. We've made it. We've made it to the end of 2020 and we're headed into winter. So well done if you've managed to do that. Here are some deals and discount codes for you to end the show. Precision Hydration, use the code OxygenAddict15 for 15% off your first electrolyte order. At TeamOxygenAddict.com, the most comprehensive triathlon coaching program for busy age groupers um get over there and book a call in the show notes and also at thriver.co you can use the code oxygenetic 10 for 10 percent off home blood test subscriptions remember there's links in the show notes for all these sponsors so you don't have to remember them until next week have a great safe training and racing week i'm coach rob Wilby, and you've been listening to the oxygenetic triathlon podcast until next week see ya